This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven. I am slowly getting in all the parts that I need to be able to start running motherboard jobs on the index. If you're new here, we're building an open source pick and place, click here to catch up. And while I could populate normal PCBs like this, I could also populate a panel. A panel is a really big circuit board that has a whole bunch of smaller circuit boards tiled inside it. There are a ton of benefits to populating a PCB panel in a pick and place as opposed to just doing individual circuit boards. First of all, you get multiple boards out of a single setup, so you save a bunch of time on loading and unloading boards from the machine. You also save a little bit of time with fiducial scanning as you only have to do that once per panel as opposed to once every single board. Because they're all connected together, doing it once does a matrix transformation for every board altogether. You save some time doing that too. Plus, you can also add some extra extra features to the panel that you may not necessarily want to put on the circuit board, like some rails to make it easier to have it go along a conveyor belt, or some extra fiducials, or some metadata about the version of the panel, or a whole bunch of other stuff. Lastly, it can also be quite a bit easier to manipulate and like move around a panel full of a bunch of smaller boards as opposed to having to deal with all the individual broken out ones. There is a reason why big SMT assembly board shops will panelize your design because it's so much easier to populate when a whole bunch of them are together into one panel. So I decided to panelize the ring light and the motherboard for the index. Now, a lot of board shops give you the option to panelize your board for you when you go to actually order the PCB. And this might be a really good decision for some folks, but I have some pretty specific design constraints in mind so that it works really well with the index. So I'm gonna design mine myself. So first off, this is all gonna be about panelization in KiCad or KiCad, whatever camp you fall in. We use KiCad for the entire index PMP project. Y'all know I'm a huge fan of open source, not only because free and open source software is awesome, but also because if the software that you use is open, it means you can hack into it and extend it and add things to it and you can integrate with it. And we'll get into that a little bit later. The way that I did this whole process is pretty manual, but at the end of the video, I'll go into how you could go about automating this so you don't have to do it manually every time. But if you're looking to panelize a pretty stable design and you want to really find control over exactly what you get, this isn't a bad way to do it. Okay, so first off, you want to start with the board that you designed. I'm starting with the Rev3 motherboard here. Make a copy of the PCB new file in a new directory so you don't get it confused with the original. You want to work in a completely separate space for this whole panel thing. Next, you want to figure out how big you want to make your panel so you know how many of the PCBs you can fit into it. I want to make sure that my panel is compatible with the size we're broadly thinking about keeping the conveyor belt for the index down the road, so I don't want it to be really too much wider than about 150 millimeters. For the Rev3 motherboard, this gives us a one by two panel, so I'm going to select the entire board and make sure that no parts of the board are locked, otherwise they won't come with you when you do this. And then I'm gonna make a grid with a one by two spacing that leaves exactly two millimeters between the edges of your board. This is really important, so make sure you're getting that distance between the edges of your board in both the X and the Y direction if you're tiling in both X and Y. Awesome, so next we're gonna make the rails. For this, we're gonna select the edge cuts layer and then click on the polyline tool and then draw in some eight millimeter wide rails that go along the entire length of the panel. These rails are typically where the panel will rest on top of the conveyor belt. It's just a place where you know that there's no components or anything that are gonna interact with the board. It's space that you are kind of using to move the panel through the assembly process. Make sure that the rails you've drawn in are also two millimeters away from the tile array of boards that you put. You pretty much want every section of PCB that you draw in here to be two millimeters apart. It really helps to have your grid set to the smallest increment needed to specify all the edge positions. So for example, if the top of the board and the bottom of the board are at the Y position 20 and 80, a one millimeter grid is totally fine. But if the top is at 20 millimeters and the bottom is at 80.25 millimeters, you probably want a 0.25 millimeter grid. You just wanna make sure that the lines of your board, all the edge cuts that you're drawing in, will pop to the grid nice and clean. All right, so here comes the fun part. Now the way that we're gonna attach all these boards together is with a special footprint called mouse bites. And if you don't know what mouse bites are, have you ever looked at the edge of a circuit board and seen like these little divots? Almost looks like a mouse took a bite out of it. Mouse bites are the PCB equivalent of the perforated tear line on a piece of paper. It's a a tiny little tab that holds sections of PCB together, but they have a lot of little holes drilled in them so they're not too difficult to break apart. I found a really great mouse bite footprint online. I'll put a link in the description to the one that I'm using here, but also be sure to check with your board shop about what their minimum requirements are for a design that they can fabricate, specifically about how small holes they can drill and how close together they can drill them. PCBWay asked if they could adjust my footprint just a little bit to fit more within their constraints and it came out great after they had their edits to it, but just be aware of the constraints of your board shop and be sure to edit the KiCad footprint 
is necessary. Once you get the footprint downloaded, make sure that KaiKai can see it by going in and managing your library and adding the folder to wherever you drop the footprint. Now press O to place a new footprint and then select the mouse byte. Drop it in the farthest upper right location of your panel where you'd like to connect different sections of PCB together. Don't worry about it overlapping with the board's existing edge for now, we'll address that in a second. Awesome, so now we're gonna take advantage of that spicy tiling tool again. Select the mouse byte footprint and do another tiling across all of the different axes that you think that that orientation of the mouse byte will fit and be useful. So I'm gonna extend my grid out to have a whole bunch of connections along the top rail with both motherboards and then I'm also gonna do another row along the bottom to attach the bottom rail. I found that for a standard 1.6 millimeter thickness PCB, about 20 millimeter spacing between each mouse bite was a pretty good distance that made the panel feel pretty strong, but also it wasn't terribly difficult to break it away. Excellent, so now we're gonna do the exact same thing, but we're gonna do it for the interface between the boards, and we're just gonna tile the footprint exactly like last time. Great, so now we have our footprints in place, but if we try and run DRC or view the 3D model, KaiCAD freaks out. This is because we have a non-manifold edge cuts layer, and there's a whole bunch of weird intersecting edge cuts lines that KaiCAD has no idea what the actual outline of the PCB is supposed to be. So now for every edge cuts line that you added a mouse bite to, delete it, and then start connecting little shorter lines between every mouse bite. Now this is definitely the most time consuming part of this process, but I found that with this panel, it only took me a few minutes to do it, so it wasn't that bad. Cool, so now let's make sure it's all connected correctly and view it in the 3D render. Sick, looking good. Awesome, so now we can add some stuff to the rails. I decided to put a silk screen on here, denoting the company name and the revision of the board, the classic little goblin footprint, and I tossed a ruler on there because why not, it's free real estate. Lastly, I added fiducials. You can just use the fiducials on the board itself when you're actually populating these things, but it is nice to have some options. You can also add holes in these rails for aligning solder paste stencils if you'd like. So give it one last final render test and admire your work. Save and export and you can upload it just as a normal PCB to any board shop, or you can select it as a I panelized myself option. This is how it looks on PCBWay's site and what I selected when I ordered these through them. Then you wait for a bit and you get these. <laughs> Pretty freaking sick, huh? I love this thing so much, it's so cool. That was actually kind of easy. What about this thing? It isn't going to be nearly as easy to tile and align the mouse bites for this thing, given that I'm working with a completely curved surface now. So for the beginning part, you're gonna do the exact same thing that you did for a rectangular board, copy the PCB file, separate it from the original in a new directory specifically for the panel, drop in a mouse bite footprint and put it about where the edges of the mouse bite footprint would intersect with the curved surface of the board. A consideration that I had at this point was that the residual tabs from the mouse bite still have to fit within the profile of the board so that the board can still fit inside all the prints that are designed to house it. If the little tabs stick outside of the curve at all, then it may not pop into the places where it's exposed expected to pop. So just make sure that when you break it out and you can pretty much figure it'll break perfectly down the center, that it's still gonna be inside the, the scope of what you're expecting the board profile to be. So just like last time, figure out what the max number of boards are gonna fit into your ideal panel size, but don't tile them all the way, just do a two by two for now. We're gonna use this arrangement to test the fit of the mouse bites and then once we have all that squared away, then we'll do the full tile. Start at a two millimeter gap between the edge of the board and slowly reduce it in both the X and Y axes until you really start to see the point at which the mouse bite footprint will intersect with both the left and the right side of the PCB. Remember the final spacing that you ultimately picked for this two by two grid because you're gonna to need to remember it later. It's gonna take a little bit of finagling to do this. I highly recommend, especially for a curved edge PCB, that you have your grid at a really, really fine resolution. KiCad doesn't let you snap a corner of an edge cuts to a, an arc and then trim a section of it, which would make this whole thing so much easier, but it doesn't let you do that. So you kind of have to get it as close as you possibly can to the existing curve, delete it, and then redraw it from one section to another. It's gonna take a little bit of finessing to get to this point, but it definitely is possible, and you only have to do it once because we're gonna tile this whole debauchery all the way down the whole panel, so it's not too bad. Okay, so now that we have all the mouse bites aligned and connected with an adjoining board on the right and the bottom, we're gonna delete the boards on the right and bottom sides aside from the lines where the mouse bite intersects with it. So now we have this weird kind of funky board and two thirds footprint. We're gonna select this and we're gonna tile this at whatever tiling you ended up with for when you were originally placing your mouse bites. Cool, so now that you've gridded this whole thing, it all kind of works together. We still do have some overlapping lines and the edge cuts is not manifold at all. We have to go through and delete all of the residual existing lines on the left and top sides of the board 
uh, that we're replacing with the component that we tiled. So go through and delete those extra existing edge cuts that don't have the modifications, the, the redrawn bits that work with the mouse bytes. You'll also see that on the far right and far bottom, there will still be kind of like some open edges that still have the mouse bytes on them. Don't delete them quite yet because you probably still want to add rails to either the east and west or north and south orientations of this board. So pick an orientation and draw in your eight millimeter wide rail, just like we did for the motherboard and make sure it's also two millimeters spaced away. After that, you can add in other mouse bytes on the other side of the board and then clean up all the open ones and you should be pretty manifold. You can go ahead and render it in the 3D view and make sure that you don't have any overlapping edge cut lines anywhere. Sweet. So now as I look at this panel, it kind of scares the hell out of me. There isn't a whole lot keeping all these boards together and I'm pretty worried about it breaking during the placing process. There are a few things you can do here. The first thing and arguably the most simple is to just add another rail on the top and bottom. This is gonna give the panel a whole bunch of structure but it's also gonna make the board a little bit bigger. And now you're gonna have to deal with adding mouse bites along different edges and you're gonna have to break off the rails in a certain order and orientation and it just kind of becomes a pain in the butt. Still a very valid option, but a little bit more involved for cleaning it up and breaking the boards out. What I opted for was just adding a little bit of extra connection between the boards just by making little blocks of PCB connected with more mouse bites. This doesn't add any size to the board, so it's free to add, but you are taking a little bit of a risk in that you're only having mouse bites going across the whole axes and you don't have a whole rail keeping it all together. But doing it this way worked out just fine for me. Once I drew one of these things in, tiling it out across the rest of the panel was actually pretty easy to do. It was just a matter of drawing one in and using the tiling tool from there. And here we go. It's plenty strong to hold up against the PNP, but also when you have to, it's not too bad to break them out. <laughs> well, I've actually never done that before. That was legitimately the first one I've ever broken out. Were you afraid? I was a little afraid. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure how easy it would be. Damn, that's really cool. Mouse fights. Oh. <laughs> Do you want to try and break some? So the main question I'm imagining you have right now is, dude, this is pretty manual. What if I have to make a change to the board? Am I gonna have to go through this entire process every time I wanna update my panel? And the shorter answer is no. It's less than ideal, but it is possible to just delete the old board guts, drop in the new ones, and then retile it, but that's not great. It's super prone to error, and it is still kinda manual. The optimal thing is to automate this whole process. There happens to be an incredible tool for KiCad called KiKit, which actually has a built-in panelization functionality. There seems to be quite a lot of customization as to what you can make the panels look like, and it's super easy to just rerun the script if you want to repanelize the board if you make an update to the original. I've not yet played around with this, but it is on my to-do list to see how it works and get it so that this whole thing is automated and I don't have to go through this whole manual process every time we re-release another revision of one of these PCBs. That being said, I am really glad that I did these two by hand. I needed to get these panels in ASAP after we released the Rev3 version of the motherboards, and it only took me a single evening to do both of these panels. Plus, I learned a lot about what actual considerations you need to have when you go through the panelizing process, and a little bit more about how KiCad actually works, and what it looks for when you're trying to play around with weird polyline segments and all that kind of stuff. It's a really good in-between if you need to figure out how to glue some stuff together and make some weird PCBs. It's not a bad solution, but for a long-term project with frequent revisions and a real need for consistency, automating this is definitely the way to go. So if you've ever used this feature in KiKit, please let me know in the comments. I really want to hear about what you did and how you went about using it. I'm in the middle of plunking around with it right now, and I'd love to hear about your experience. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. But before I go, I want to thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay made these panels and they came out so freaking good. I mean, look at these things. I'm really impressed that they managed to, and I know that they do this all the time. I know that they make panels and like, it's just new to me. It's not new to everybody, but this is really cool. <laughs> they really came out great. And I did give them a pre-panelized board that I just uploaded as a PCB and they played ball with that. They knew what I was trying to go for. They adjusted things to, to make it work for what I was trying to do. If you're looking for a board shop, I highly recommend PCBWay. Thank you so much to PCBWay for sponsoring this video.